Do you allow it on your driver's license, organ donation? And you can do that on your, some advanced directives have it on there too. Um, they will not discuss organ donation unless there's brain death or cardiac death. I mean, if you're in, you come in the emergency room and you've got a sore toe, they're not looking at you, you know, like, you know, well, this guy's got some good organs here. Let me tell you. He's got it. Did you see it? Driver's license right here. Hey, good organs. Let's, let's go get them right now. No. Okay? Don't have to worry about that. It's not going to happen. There's so much paperwork, so much stuff that goes on with that, you do not have to worry about organs taken prematurely. I know somebody said, or donated an organ and a piano to the Salvation Army. Well, we're not talking about that, okay? Ethics committee. If there is an ethical dilemma of you can't have good communication, some kind of communication impasse, there's an ethics committee. You have one at your hospital. Anybody on that committee? You, uh, there are doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists and even members at large from the community that can be on that to keep them ethical that can make decisions for if there's a problem. So if you need that, uh, the committee is, is uh, basically bioethics. The committee could talk about accounting and anything in the hospital, but basically we become bioethics committees. And sometimes there are IRB re institution review boards as part of that committee that discuss non-FDA approved experimental drugs, procedures, stuff like that. The ethics advocate, when do you become an advocate? When does anybody become an advocate? When does someone speak up for a patient that can't speak? One is when the patient's wishes are being ignored. Two, when there's a communication impasse. I am the liaison of our ethics committee and I'll tell you 99% of the time, the issues are communication. Somebody didn't talk. When I get them together, doctor and patient, they go, oh, that's what you were saying. Or family and family, or doctor and doctor. It's like, well, yeah, that's, 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 we agree on that, but there's a communication impasse, and then there's frustration between the family or doctors and the team, so sometimes just getting them together eye to eye solves that. Ethical dilemmas, who can you ask, who can ask for an ethics consult? A doctor can, a nurse can, a respiratory therapist, administration, a patient, a surrogate, the family, anyone can say, whoa, what's going on here? We need help. We need somebody to assist us so that they can view this and see what's going wrong. Where that committee is not legislative, they will not say, this is what you will do, but they will help discover, get information, and help you make decisions. Who orchestrates that committee? Uh, the chairperson of the ethics committee, if you can find out who they are, they can call an ad hoc committee. Uh, CNO, find that person, quality manager, risk manager, and they will know who to call. Excuses for not making an advanced directive. A lot of you, I'm not that sick. Why? Why would I need to make out one of those things? Or, I'm only 39. I told you about the 37 year old. But how old is old? Well, anything over 18. If you're out of mom's house, 18, make it. You go, I'm not even married yet. Well, how will they know what you want? Now, I know 18 year olds aren't going to do it. I can't even get 39, I can't even get my wife to do one, okay? You know, a lot of medical people just don't fill them out because they go, I want to make my own decisions. Well, when you're comatose, how are you going to make your own decisions? How are you going to be in control? That's your last control signature when you do your advance record to tell people, this is the way I want it, kids, okay? Or the excuse, I'm, I'm only here for toe surgery. <laughs> Every time any patient comes in any hospital, Joint Commission says, you must ask them, do they have an advanced directive? They're going, my doctor told me this was safe. Why are you talking? Well, because we have to. We have to bring it up at that time and see if you have one. Now, uh, do you know somebody, you know, we're talking about advanced directive. Did the doctor tell you something he didn't tell me? You know, maybe, maybe there's something. Oh, well, no, I better call my doctor, see if something worse is going on, because you wouldn't be talking about this if everything were okay. You, you know these things that come up all the time. It's a bad omen. I know it. I know of somebody that filled out their, their life insurance on Monday and died on Tuesday. I know it. If I fill it out on Monday, I know it's going to happen. I say, well, I'm glad they filled it out on Monday. You know, it's not going to make it happen. But they're like, they're like shaking as they're signing their signature. You know, well, get the facts. Get all the information you can, but don't worry about it. 
I want to be in control one last time. Here's my favorite. I was at an, a health fair, and I was at the booth where I was handing out advanced directive. All these people going by taking one. Oh, great, great. One lady goes by, I don't need one of those. I haven't had a heart attack in years. <laughs> and I go, I gotta write that one down. That's good. <laughs> advanced uh, excuses for not making advanced directive, what's yours? Can you give me one excuse right now? Did we get the blank ones? She's bringing, bringing them. them. When we get one, can you think of one excuse why not to sign one today? When if one hour later you don't like it, you can tear it up and change it. When if you never need to change it, it's there. Why not? And, and I hear, well, I want to talk to my doctor first. Go ahead. I want to talk to my attorney first. Go ahead. I want to talk to my kids first. Go ahead. But if you were to just sign something now that is so general, that even at that time, they're going to bring the doctors together, your family together, and all talk about it anyway. What are we waiting for? I get to be there with the families when there's not one. And the trauma and the frustration with, oh, I wish this was already done. I think it's the most loving thing you will ever do for your family to do it now. Just like buying life insurance. Just by talking about things of getting your house together. It's the most loving thing you'll ever do to keep them from having to make those decisions once that come. I've looked into your county statistics here. The death rate is one per person. <laughs> I know that everybody's going to die. Nobody's going to escape it. I've tried to. I'm not going to escape this one day. I'm going to need one. Your living will. Take out your blank living will when they give them now questions. What's your questions you have or comments about living wills, advanced directives, organ donation, hospice, yes sir? It's just, um, how does this play into the volunteer chaplaincy program? How much, you know, should we bring this up? Is it brought up already by the nurses? I, I, I'm completely new at getting into a hospital, so I don't know where you, to You wouldn't it. bring it up as thinking it's the right timing, but nurses would maybe have brought that to your attention, the family's talking about it. I'm not giving you this information that you become the educator. Yeah. I'm educating you that when you come in the hospital, you go, oh, now I understand. But I don't want you to become the advocate that sits by the bed and goes, let me explain to you about advanced directives, and you need to make these choices. No. I just want you to be aware. It, and I'm going to be teaching you a lot of things just to feel comfortable with the medical scene. Because most of us ministers come in like, I have no clue what's going on. Well, I mean, when I took my job, my wife's a nurse, but I didn't know anything. And I go home, Sarah, what is this? And some of the new technology, she goes, I don't know. <laughs> you know? Because as you mentioned before, as, as pastors, we're very comfortable at telling people what we know. Yeah. And you just told us a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to be for your bit. You take this and you teach your family. You take this and you may teach your congregation. But as a volunteer chaplain, we're not asking you to sit in that chair to educate, okay? But who will do that? We've got case managers. Where'd you go? She went to go find him. Okay. She's she went to go find him. But probably some more. Case managers do that. Nursing supervisors do that. Nurses do some of that. Uh, nurse of the floor, uh, patient representatives, patient advocates, uh, risk managers can do it, quality managers can do it. So there's a lot of people that understand this stuff to call on. So when you're like, uh-oh, I can't remember all that we learned there, I'm not asking you to do that. Can, can I just yes. give you a, an example that in a sure. previous hospital, because when this is happening, there's all the emotions looking for a vehicle to drive around. Yeah. And so at this previous hospital, it was a Catholic hospital, we would often call in the nuns when the families were having these heated discussions. Mm -hmm. Because everybody wants mama's urn, it was grandmama's blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So if you understand the lingo of what they're trying, is the durable power of attorney for health care versus who's got the banking account, it just helps you bring what you bring best, and that's what he's saying, facilitating what, what, what you really need to know and sorting out what needs to be done now. Uh, we certainly here at Vera would not put that on y'all, but you could be of great help in yeah. supporting the family, just that you understand walking in, kind of a background of what's going yeah. on, then you understand what the family's going through. A lot of research. <clears throat> I like refer, 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 yeah. refer, yeah. Just uh, when you... As chaplains, we need to know our job description and what is not our job description and our place and what's not our place. 
So this is 